I want to talk about the neighborhoods now. As I talked about it, when you move into a, most people, black people, a lot of us want to say we want to go into a white neighborhood. I used to be like that. I said, oh, I don't want to live in a black neighborhood because I would think, oh, they're always ghetto. It's, it's, it's just the people are ghetto and it's nasty, it's dirty. And we always say we want to live in a white neighborhood where, oh, it's nice. It looks nice in a white neighborhood. But the Lord starts showing me something. I started taking notice. When I would live in these areas, I would see these people driving around. He was showing me that they were loose and things. People come from the Caucasian neighborhoods. Caucasian people would go into the black areas and start attacking their neighborhoods and attacking their, their stores and everything so they, they wouldn't have anything because they did not want the neighborhoods to thrive. Because see, if there is if they have businesses there, then there's money, there's jobs for everyone. The people can 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 thrive and be successful and they can 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 pretty much thrive. And if you think about it back in the old days, like when they had Black Wall Street, they would attack our neighborhoods. And they did it physically then by setting them on fire. And this is stuff that's still happening, but it's being used through sorcery and witchcraft. And this is why I talk a lot about witchcraft and a lot of people don't want to bring it up and the, the government won't make laws for it because it's, it's, it's something that's been used subtly. It's another form of racism that since they had to, since black, the Lord was showing, since black people had fought back against, you know, discrimination and against these laws and they, they wanted to end segregation. He showed me that the Caucasian race had, had started using sorcery to actually start putting people in bondage. It was another way of putting them in bondage through using sorcery. And then black people started joining in with them because they wanted to get their little share. So now they're actually helping them put their own people in oppression. And, and God's going to really deal with you. You think he's going to deal with the Caucasian race. Doing, yes, he's going to deal with them, but you're even more to blame. He's going to hold you more accountable now because you fought against your own brothers and sisters because you want to your things and and that's where it, you you see where you have a, the curse of Cain and Abimelech on you but if you don't repent you know I think it, everyone who's doing this needs to repent because it says in the Bible what does it profit a man to gain gain the world and lose his entire soul they're doing this because they want to have all the riches to themselves God did not create like I said one group of people to enjoy everything there's enough resources in this earth for everyone and there have been a selfish group of people what they want to call themselves the elite and they want to hold all the power, all the privilege, all the authority. And they want to keep everyone else oppressed in their bondage. And so the Lord was showing me how they were attacking these black neighborhoods. And I would literally see this before my eyes. I would uh, see how the neighborhoods would just become dilapidated. And one time I went to this mall that was in a black area. It was in a predominantly black area. And the, the mall was so desolate. That they had nice stores in there, but no one would go in there and shop. And like, what's going on? He showed me that the witches would go in there and walk around cursing the stores, cursing the people, making their businesses go out, making them not have any, you know, any any type of, they wouldn't get any type of business. They put blinders up so people couldn't go there. And so I would then drive out to these malls out in the all Caucasian area. You see all this, it's like tons of people shopping there. They're getting all this, this business. So I went on a fast. The Lord had me go on a 30 day fast. I went on a 30 day fast in the city of Harrisburg and I used to go in there and I would pray over the mall. I'd pray over the stores to bring back jobs back in the black areas so the people could start thriving. You would build back up the black community. You build back up the malls and start sending people to the mall because the mall was so desolate. And I was praying over the mall and, and I'm quite sure, I don't know if the mall is owned by a Christian person or not, but they attack like he was showing me, they attack a lot of Christian businesses. They attack a lot of businesses by, you know, African-American people, you know, those who are filled with, with spirits of racism in them. Because a lot of this go hand in hand. When you're under, when you're controlled by the devil, the devil hates people. And he's going to use racism, racism. He's going to use um, child abuse. He's going to use all kinds of things that are destroy different groups of people. And so I would pray over it. I, I spent a 30 days fast and I prayed. And within six or seven months, that mall was was filled up again and it's like wow I, I he was showing me how they would lose spirits demons into the neighborhoods that's why christians are supposed to go in neighborhoods and start praying if you're living in the city you're supposed to pray regularly over the neighborhood and he says if we don't pray that gives them access to sorcerers and witches will come to our neighborhood and they will pray and lose demonic spirits of destruction there they will lose spirits to cause people to be on alcohol and drugs they will lose spirits of bondage and, and poverty to cause the neighborhood to go down that's why you saw a lot of the black neighborhoods were all dilapidated and messed up and a lot of there was a lot of crime a lot of chaos and they were targeting mostly at areas where there were predominantly black people and the Lord was showing me all of this. And so I would pray and pray. And I was doing a lot of work for the kingdom of God. I was doing a lot of work to free people's 
people from Bosch. That's why I say when I was doing this thing for 15 years behind the scenes, I was. And I got retaliated against. God had me going up in churches. I, I was going from neighborhood to neighborhood, different cities, different churches, different businesses. I would even go to parks. There would be parks where in the black area where the parks, you, you would see, they would keep our people from going. They didn't want us to go to a park. That's, that's how oppressed they had our people. And I would go and the Lord would say, pray over these parks because I want the people at the parks. He wanted his children to come out to the parks. And when I first went there, I would feel this demonic resistance. It would be a demonic resistance over the park. It's like, I would feel like I didn't want to be there. And the Lord would say, stay. Because these were the principalities telling me not to be there. And so I would stay there at the park. Me and my kids would go. We would play in the park. And we kept going back. And, and the more we go back and the more I'm praying, I would feel the resistance letting up. And then I would see more and more people come. More people of color and other people coming to the park. And so this is what they do. They put out curses to cause desolation. Or to keep certain groups of people out. And these are demonic principalities. And, and, and this is all going on all over the country of America. And like I said, if people don't start repenting. You're going to end up in hell. You're going to wake up one day and in a lake of fire being tormented for eternity with the same demons and gods you worship destroying you and, and hurting you every day. I'm just letting people know because they don't understand, you know, this is this is wicked and evil, oppressing groups of people just because of the color of their skin or just because they don't have something or just because you feel they're not worthy of having and enjoying the same things and privileges that you have. Who are you to say that someone can't enjoy the same privileges? Who are you to tell someone that? God created this world for all of his creation. Not just for you, a certain group of people. You feel people are trivial, but you have kept them. A lot of you have kept them in a bondage by attacking them. A lot of our government have created stumbling blocks. These elite organizations have created stumbling blocks to keep these people oppressed. And the same people who they want to get money from have buying up their goods are the same ones they're oppressing. And the Lord was showing me all of this. And so they retaliated against me. They didn't like the work that I was doing for the kingdom of God. So they started attacking my children. My children were getting sick every day. My daughter started having seizures. I started feeling like I was being sexually violated in my home. I was being bewitched on the jobs. The entire job was coming up against me, trying to drive me crazy. They would try to put suicide thoughts into my head, try to fill me with thoughts. And these were demonic thoughts because the Lord would tell me, look out the window. When I was sitting in my house, he would say, look out my window. Because one day I was sitting there, I, I felt so devastated. He says, look out the window. I look out the window, I see them walking past my house. And he said, they're losing stuff at the home. They're losing spirits to attack you. And I would have to pray. I plead the blood of Jesus on my mind. I start praying. I pray in the spirit and I would return it back to them. And then I would feel a relief. Lease. And that's just why a lot of people don't understand when a lot of time when you're feeling these, these spirits coming at you, destroying you and trying to cause you to go insane. These are demonic principalities. These are people losing witchcraft and sorcery over you. So like I said, my children were becoming ill and sick every day. Um, I ended up losing my job. I had to move away and I went back to Ohio and they caused things that happened with my child, my children were having seizures, my son was getting bullied and I took them out of the school and they put an educational neglect complaint on me even though my kids were in school and they came in and took my children out of the home. They said I was crazy even though they never gave me a mental health evaluation. They used something from 15 years ago saying that because I had depression, I suffered from depression 15 years ago, that, that I was crazy even though I told them that we were being attacked, that people were using sorcery against us, they said that I was crazy. And they did not go back and check. They did no mental health evaluation. And I know this was a retaliation because of all the work I did for God's kingdom. And they took my kids and they're still gone as of this day. And I have cried out for help. And that's why I said the Illuminati has destroyed me. I'm at the point now where they've kept me from working jobs. If I do get a job, I can only work for a few months at a time because they attack me so much on the job. They do source on me. They have everyone attacking me. I, I can't stay on these jobs alone. Um, they kept me in a bondage. They have destroyed every single vehicle I have. Every time I get a new vehicle, they, they destroy it. Like I'll see birds out there or I will have all these problems where it would just break down and keep having all these problems. It got to the point where my car broke down. I didn't even have money to get it fixed. So there I am now. And it's like, I'm sitting here. I've been suffering for a long time and I'm waiting for God's redemption because it's like people who have been guilty of doing these things, oppressing God's children, oppressing God's people. You need to start repenting because he's going to come back now. He says those who have gathered together against me, who they have gathered together against us. They shall fall for our sakes. And he's at the point where he's bringing it down because too many of his people have been suffering. These elite organizations have been destroying his people for years and God is not, he's not going to keep allowing this to happen. He's seen everything and people have been crying out and he's ready to avenge his children. That's why so many people are speaking out now. A lot of people are leaving and, and walking away because God is at the point where he's separating the tears from the wheat and he's ready to come back and get his church and you who have done these things, you need to start repenting and forfeiting of the goods and the things you've done to oppress people. And 
Like I said, I sit here now with no money, no job, no anything, not even my children, because of what they've done to me. But God is going to repay. 